So let's get started with our first modeling step and this will be here the glass. And I don't want to match 100% the reference. It's more that I take ideas from such a reference and I search for things which I like and which I want to apply to my model. What I like about this glass here is this really interesting refraction which is going on inside. And I think it's due to the fact that it's really a thick glass. We have a really thick bottom here and also, yeah, this blurriness in it. So I try to achieve something like that here. Okay, let's switch over to the object context and also here to the scene view. And the next thing I want to do is that I change a little bit my layout here. So I hold down my option key and click here on the divider in the middle so that I change the orientation of these two panels. Now the parameters on the left, the scene view is on the right. And then I click again here into the middle, this time without option key so that I change here. The order parameters is now on the right and the scene view is on the left. Another thing which I tend to do really often is I use sometimes some shelf tools, but I don't like that they throw me out of containers. So if you normally take something, let's do a torus here. You see, you get a container and inside of this container, there is the generating node. And if you now are inside of this torus container and you want to add, for example, a sphere and you control click again on the sphere, you see you're thrown out of your torus object container and this object is now added on the scene level, which I don't want. So I changed the behavior of Houdini's shelf tools under this icon here. So if you click here, you see you create new nodes at the object level in the moment, which is exactly what I don't want. And I switch it over to creating context. And now if I go in here, I go into the torus and I add another sphere here, control click, you see, now Houdini adds the sphere inside of this existing torus container. We template the old torus and I can now work inside of this container. So this is a behavior which I use a lot while I'm modeling. You can switch it here. And another thing I want to do now is I switch my background to dark. So press the D key, go to background dark course we want to work with splines here and you don't see them too good with a grayish background and then I think we are ready to go so let's press spacebar 3 to go to the front view I move my view a little bit down so that we have here the origin of the scene and now we have to talk about how to model a glass so there are different approaches you can use here for example a tube inside of Houdini and then you shape the tube like we've done in the banana project. But this time I want to talk a little bit about curve modeling. And so we start with the curve here and then we use, if you go here to the model shelf, a revolve, which rotates this curve around an axis and other programs, like for example, Cinema 3D, it's named a lathe object. So here it's a revolve. Let's start with the curve. You can add here your container by hand. So I lay down a geo container, say this is glass. I go into that. I add a curve now. And if you click the curve and Houdini hasn't done it, activate the handle tool because with the handle tool you draw now your curve. You see here a little helper. With a left click you add points and yeah, if you are finished you can press the enter key to end your drawing of the curve. If you take a look here on the right, you see Houdini is able to draw different kind of curves, for example, polygon lines, NURBS, busy, and points. In our case, we start here with a simple NURBS curve. And if you have never worked with real NURBS, NURBS stands for Non-Uniform Rational B-Splines. We have a really short introduction here. If you want to know more, you can take a look in our Houdini Fundamentals training on Vimeo, but let's start. So if you now click here, you set a point and this here, what you see here, these helpers are not the curve. You've set a CV, which is a control vertex. And if you now set the second point here, still no curve, because if you have a NURBS and you set control vertices, you need for order four, a minimum of three points to get the first curve segment. So if I now set the 
third point, you now see that you get your first curve segment. And the interesting thing is that these control vertices are not placed on the curve. The curve is between these control vertices and sometimes I refer in trainings to them like magnets and these magnets shape the form of the curve. You see it here if I draw a little bit farther you see that the curve is always flowing between these points. I press the enter key to finish now here my curve and if you now take a look here you see none of these points are sitting on the curve. But what you are able to do now with your handle tool is you can click here on the points and stop moving them and so that's the way you shape now your curve here. And if you want to have a sharper appearance here you have to add more points. And to add points with the handle tool in the curve sub you have to hold down the shift key. So you click here with the shift key on the curve but the interesting thing again is that you get a control vertex but he's placed somewhere here off because it's only a control vertex. But you see if you bring them closer together you get a sharper appearance here of the curve. For beginners this way of working is sometimes a little bit complicated and so we can have a different approach for drawing NURB scripts. Let's go to our node here and delete the coordinates here by double clicking here backspace enter and now we can start again. Instead of drawing the curves with CVs, you also can use the breakpoint method. So I click here breakpoints and I do the same like before. I click here and you see you get instantly a curve here by clicking. And these points here are exactly placed on the curve. The question arises, is this the same type of curve? Yes, you still have CVs and you see them. If I press now the enter key, and activate here my points, then you see that you have here around this curve the CVs, but you manipulate the breakpoints here. But if you now move a breakpoint, you also see that the curve changes not only in the segment between these two breakpoints, but the whole curve changes. So I, for my opinion, think that this is sometimes not so controllable, so I'm more in working with CVs, but yeah, it's a matter of taste. Let's delete the coordinates again here, because I want to demonstrate you the polygon line. And the polygon line is really what you think. You draw out polygons, so it's really easy to do that. Okay, you click here, and then we finish here, for example the enter key and then you begin to shape this polygon line like you shape polygons. So let's talk about this briefly. So if you want to add points like before hold down the shift key click on a curve the point is exactly placed where you clicked then you can move this point up and down. If you want to get rid of a point you can select it by clicking on it here and press the backspace key. If you want to add points at the end you first select the point here at the end and then you hold down the shift key like before and click somewhere out here and now you can add here points. If you are drawing and you want to have an undo for the last points you can press the backspace key again and again and you see you walk back in your drawing process and I go out by pressing escape and if you now want Let's go back to the handle tool to add here at the beginning. You click first the beginning point and then you click again here and then you can add here more and more points if you like. So this is the way of working here. But what I now want to do is I want to draw out my shape. So I go back here to NURBS. I want to draw with CVs. I've forgotten to tell you that's also a freehand approach here but yeah not so controllable. So. NURBS, CVs and I want to start here exactly at um, the origin point. So I use snapping for that. We have here a grid snapping, a curve snapping, a point snapping and a multi snapping and you reach these snapping functions by pressing the X key on your keyboard so you have a radial menu where you can tell okay I want to have grid snapping and then I click here and you see we have placed our first point. I'm in the drawing mode but now I can press for example the X key again to deactivate now the grid snapping and now I can go on drawing. And now let's draw something. So I go here 
another step here. Then I make a third point here. Then we go up a little bit. Let's try something like that here. Take your time to draw your shape. And then we end, for example, here. And the next step now is shaping the whole thing. So I start now moving these CVs around. And like I've said, if you bring them closer together, you get a sharper edge or yeah, a more narrow edge corner. And if you place them far away, you get something more rounded. And I try now to find a shape which I like. So it will take some time. Okay, I think that's good for now. The next thing I want to do now is I want to show you how to place these two points here exactly here on the axis which I want to use. And for the first point, we have used here the grid snapping, which is really easy to do. But what about this point here? If I press the D key and switch the background to a light background, you see that we don't have at this point here a grid point. So how to place now this here exactly in the middle. There are two ways of doing that. You can select here this point and then go to the end of this uh, really long list and change the coordinates here. You see these are really coordinates. But this is a really annoying thing. Don't go into the geometry spreadsheet. There you can change values. It's point 20 if you like, so you can change that. But then if you commit this, you freeze your node because you have done something like an override. And so this is not the way you normally do that. We use snapping again, but in a different way. This time we want to snap this point relative to this point. And to do that, I remove this point here really quick to demonstrate this more for you. I move this point here to the side that it's placed now here make them thicker, that you see them better. I go here to the point snapping. And normally, if you have activated the point snapping and grab this point here, you see you snap here onto that point here. But what I want to do is I want to snap it only with one axis, with this green axis here onto this point. To do that, we can take now the red axis here and move our mouse cursor while I'm holding down the left mouse button. You see, the only way this point can move is on the X axis because this is the activated axis. But if I move now my mouse cursor down, you see I can now show Houdini on which point you want to snap and then I release. And so you have now these two points vertical aligned. Done this. And I think I will use later a little bit more time to shape this. But now I want to show you the revolve process. Let's add a revolve node. And then you have to hook it up. There's a little trick inside of the tab menu inside of Houdini. Let's do that again. I remove the revolve here. And this node here is activated. You also can click here on this out node to add something. And then you press tab say revolve, but instead of pressing only enter, which adds the node, but you have to set then the display flag onto the last node, you hold down the shift key and press enter. And then you see you get a directly connection and the display flag is also set on the revolve itself. So really convenient. So this is our result now. I think it's a good start. It's not perfect, but yeah. Talking and drawing is not so easy at the same time. So let's look around. You see we revolve the whole thing. If you have the handle tool active and select the revolve, you see that you get an axis widget here and you can move the axis on which this whole thing rotates around. You see it rotates around a different axis. I reset this by setting the origin back to zero. Also, you can rotate this thing 
to have different axis alignments for the rotation. And here is the divisions. I think we need some more divisions. Let's do 24, for example. Then you can open the revolve if you like, and then you can change here the angle so that you open the whole thing. And here you see that's reversed, but we don't have to think about the reverse thing at the moment. So let's go back here to closed. And yeah, the next thing I want to do now is I need a little bit more resolution. I can change the divisions here for the rotation itself. You see it here under divisions. So if you need something more rounded, you can enter here, for example, 36. But what I want to do is I want to have some more control points here in this direction. And to change them, you have to make this before the revolve. So you can go back into the curve and add more points, or you can add them here with NURBS tools or polygon tools. And this is a really important concept. I've talked a lot about that in my Houdini fundamentals training. Houdini is able to work in this stream with both types of geometry. Let's test this. If you go with your middle mouse button over this curve, note you see this here is a NURBS. And after the revolve, you get as a result a NURBS surf. So this is NURBS and you can Go in here, for example, I take a select tool and I select here a point, which is a CV, by the way. And if you now go to the translate tool, you move this, you see, yeah, this is still NURBS because this here is now delivering NURBS data. But if you go here to the curve now and change the type to polygons, for example, you see now you deliver polygon lines, then the same revolve suddenly generates a polygon surface. So a really flexible system inside of Houdini. Why is this important? If you now go in here and you want to refine this curve, you can use NURBS operations. So if you press your tab key, you see here there's a whole NURBS section where you have a refine node where you can work with that or fillet strips and so on and so on, carve. But what I want to do, for example, now here is I want to use here the curve as NURBS so that we have the basic shape and then change the whole thing by adding points to the polygons world. And this is the job of the resample node. So let's add a resample. And the output of a resample is always polygons. So keep that in mind. So if you resample this now, you see output is polygons, but we know that the chain still works because Revolve is able to do that. And now we can go into the resample and change now how many points you need. And this is defined here by the measurement and the length. You see, we measure in the moment the arcs here, and this is the maximum segment length you want to have. And if you lower that, you get more points and you get closer to the result we had with the NURBS. So this is a way you can go. So you can now fiddle around until you find something which you like. And you also can go here to the revolve itself and you see now you have all these points here on the surface. I go here to the primitive mode because the points are distracting a little bit. And now you play with that. But I think that's not bad. I use that here now. And the result is like expected. Now polygons. Great. Next thing. I want to reverse the whole thing. So let's use a reverse node. Shift enter to do that. And now we want to round some edges here. So this edge here, I want to bevel. How to do that? This is something we learned in the banana project. We press the S key for select, and then you can use the three key on your keyboard to change here to the edge mode. Then we make a double click here on the edge to select it. You see, this is the edge here. And then we add a poly bevel here. I press enter. It's bluish now, so I can change with my mouse interactively here the distance, or you can go here. This time I do it with my mouse. I go a little bit closer, click and drag to change here now the distance. And if you need more subdivisions, which we need to get it round, I use my scroll wheel on my mouse to add one cut here in the middle. So we can do it completely interactive. And I do the same thing now here. So I think the placement is good, but I want to have it here also. So 
I first go out here with escape, then I press S3 again to have this here. And now you can go into your radial menus. You remember polygon modeling is on, so I can press the C key, poly bevel, drag, change it here, how much you need. Mm, yeah, let's do something like 0 0.05. 7 was good. And one, two subdivisions, for example. Let's try this. Then we go back to the selection again. This time this year. And if the last tool was polybevel, you can press the Q key on your keyboard if you like to go back here. But we've talked about this before. So let's go here and use a polybevel again. Make this a little bit more round. I think this looks a little bit better for me. So I go back here to that and change it to two divisions. And I think I've grabbed by accident an inner edge somewhere. Let's take a look here. No, looks good for me. Yeah, here it is. This here is something that we don't want. Why? Because we've changed here the amount of polygons. And so this polybevel isn't right anymore. So click here, select this edge by double clicking. Press enter. And now we are back. Perfect. I think that's it. It looks okay for me. Let's finish this lesson by adding normals to the whole stream because we don't have normals at the moment. So we can use a normal node. And we change here the whole thing to face areas, which works better for most cases. I increase the curves angle to 89 degree. So I think it looks nice here. And then I close the whole chain by a null object. We say this is glass in capital letters and I tend to color my end nulls black. So I press the C key to get the color palette. I click here the black and then the C key again to remove that. Let's go out of the glass and yeah, look around. If you now want to see how it behaves, if you subdivide that, you can select the container, go here to render, and display as you remember this from the last time subdivision surface. So you can divide this even more and you see it's really rounded here. It looks nice. And this is exactly what happens later in the rendering process. So I go back here now to full geometry. And so we close now this lesson and we see each other in the next lesson for the brushes.